Hello, my name's Bont, Richard Bont, and this is Curmudgeonly Yours, a show on Society Bites Radio, part of the Radio Ear Network family, supplying social interaction for the mind and soul. The introductory and concluding music to this show is La Polonaise by Wieniawski, played by Max Bont. I am your host and curmudgeon, where everything is what it seems. Nothing is what it seems. And what is not said is often of most interest. Today, I will be speaking with Robert Spence, a retired health administrator, and the program is The Case for Trump. This is Robert's third appearance on the show. Hi, Robert. How are you doing, Richard? Very well, very well, thanks. It's good to have you on Curmudgeon New Yours again on Society Bites Radio, part of the Radio Ear Network and broadcasting out of Sarasota, Florida. Uh, Robert Spence has spent most of his life as a health administrator, but also as a medic and operating room technician during the height of the Vietnam War. In 1967, Robert was drafted twice into the U.S. Army, getting a deferment for college in March, but finally drafted in December 1967 before he had even finished his semester. In those days, not everyone could get college deferments like Bill Clinton, Howard Dean, George Bush, or even President Trump. For over a year, during 1969 to 1970, Robert served his country in the Third Surgical Hospital in the Mekong Delta in Vietnam. When he returned from the war, he obtained his bachelor's and master's degree in health administration from the State University of New York at Stony Brook in 1974. Robert worked as an OR tech at the hospital for five years and then spent over 28 years in New York State docks as health administrator in Clinton CF, a 2800 inmate maximum security prison. After seven, eight years at the facility, he was promoted to assistant director of health services for all of New York State's 70 prisons in 1989, which meant that 19 of his 28 years in corrections were spent as the assistant director of health services. Well, Robert Spence, let's jump right into it. President Trump, how do you think he's doing right now? And do you think he'll be reelected? I think he'll be reelected. And I really think it's going to be almost like 19, <clears throat> not to use the bad 1984, but the good 1984 when Reagan was reelected with a landslide, 49 state <laughs> landslide. Okay. So I think that I think that's what's going to happen. Um, there's so much enthusiasm from, I guess, all the people around me, my relatives and everybody else, they're all for Trump. And even mm -hmm. the ones who, don't, you know, uh, a lot of them don't put the signs out, but they're everybody. As a matter of fact, I was at the doctor's office this morning, and the nurse was coming in to talking about COVID being all this bunch of BS, and she goes. She said to me, well, I think after the election, it'll all be over. <laughs> so even people you don't even know, or, or know it's all a scam. So I, he's got this so much. I think in, in a, during an election like this, what counts more is enthusiasm, not hatred. So sure, there's sure. so much enthusiasm on the Trump side by everybody. They can't wait to vote. And they know it's critical. Even my daughter is frightened of, of, the, of the results if, if Biden wins. And Biden, you know, you know, doesn't know where he is. So uh, it's and the media, yeah. media is generally going to manipulate people who have always been manipulated. But basically, I think he's going to win. He's going to win big. OK, so you think uh, that all the all these polls and everything that show him behind, maybe that's sort of a good thing because it gets people out to vote. Huh? Well, the polls don't mean anything because they never do. And they're all run by political organizations. And there's very few of them that actually uh are, are relative. There's one woman by the name of Salida Zito who followed all of Trump's campaign in the Midwest where he won all those states where he got all the electoral college votes. And she was the only one to say he was going to win because there was such enthusiasm for his message. And that's sure. doing the same thing now. He started in Pennsylvania and he was in Michigan and Wisconsin. And now he's, he's, he's showing the flag everywhere. Yeah. And okay, Biden's right. showing nothing. So yeah. it's important. Well, let's talk, let's talk about the election again and start off with your excellent question. Why did the Biden campaign hire 600 lawyers and why are they convinced they're going to have to litigate people's votes? Because they know they're going to lose. And you got to remember, Democrats, the history of Democrats, they've always cheated. Even with JFK in 1960, because I think we were both alive then. Yeah. Um, the, the last precinct 
to put their votes in in the country was Chicago, which was a huge Democratic uh, stronghold. Yeah, sure. And they had everybody, everybody in the Teamster Union got a list of names, and they uh, had to go out and, and register them to vote and, and vote for them. And they were actually people who, who were dead. They, got, they, went, they went to the graveyards and got 10 names and gave them to, like, a thousand different guys. So that's how they cheated, and they've always cheated. So, and the reason they're going to litigate, they're going to use the battleground states to actually watch the voting and litigate it regardless of the result. And if, even in Florida, you, I think you just heard that Bloomberg is putting $100 million in Florida. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, that's probably going to be not moving the needle much as far as I'm concerned. It's going to be close, probably, because sure. as many people have moved from other states down here, but... Um, I still think he'll take Florida. I still think he'll take the battleground states. And even states that, even I saw in the New York Post about a month ago, it said New York is in play for Trump. Uh, because there's wow. so many so many people have left New York State and upstate where I'm, where my, my family's from and everybody's from. Uh, they, all, they all voted like 90% against Bloomberg, against Cuomo. But the city is where all the votes are, you know. Sure. Votes, so. Well, so I, I think it's going to. No, I just wanted to say I, I, I was going to talk about the press. Uh, you mentioned you brought that up in this election campaign. Uh, but I also want to talk about the narrative. And I'm referring to a paper you sent before. I don't know who wrote it, but it, it is entitled The Narrative. OK, here are a few quotes from it. The narrative is the assumptions the press believes in possibly without knowing these assumptions. It's so powerful because it's unconscious. Uh, Robert Spence, what are some of these assumptions about this narrative that we talk about on the left, I mean? Well, it's very interesting because they all, they're all, they're, it's like a cult. They talk to themselves. They go to parties with each other. They know each other. They're in, they're, they work together. They never go outside that circle of friends, which is, which is okay, right? But... Yeah. I remember, I remember watching in 2012 when Romney was running against Obama. Mm -hmm. There, he had just he had just stated something that uh, Russia is our number one enemy, and then somebody all and he was having a press conference, and somebody had taken a video of all these press people inside a room before the press conference stated and started, and they were conspiring on which questions to ask and who would follow up on each question. So mm -hmm. this, I mean, it, I've known this for years. They were actually conspiring on what to ask him, not on what, whether it was truthful or not, but how right. to, how to uh, make his statement negative rather than positive. So, and yeah. that's what they do. They, they work as a team. Yeah, and no, I, their... yeah, yeah. Well, what, what do you think the effect COVID-19 will have on the election? Will it make or break President Trump? And how are Trump and his committee talking about it within their law and order campaign? I think, first of all, there's a good thing that happened with COVID-19. He hired this, uh, he got rid of Fauci. Fauci's no longer in the group, but he does, he's, he's a media darling, so he'll be, he'll be uh, used by media. But a guy mm -hmm. named Dr. Scott Atlas, who's been on Fox several times, talking about this this is way over the summer because i was up in new york with my grandkids and mm -hmm. he was talking about we got to develop herd immunity which is how all viruses are shut down because when there's no hosts there's no virus and he, right. he talks about reopening he, he talked about reopening the schools and business and just this week the other day i was watching a um a news conference with trump and someone from abc said why did you lie about the coronavirus when doing with the, when bob woody and Trump said, it's a very bad statement. You should be ashamed of yourself. And then he says to this doctor, Scott Atlas, he says, Scott, how many flu deaths did we have in 2016, 17? He said, well, the average is 50,000 a year, but the CDC doesn't count flu deaths. They do an estimate. So mm -hmm. the coronavirus has been overhyped, and it's been – I was just at the doctor's office this morning, and I talked about that, and I said, you know – so the CDC actually put this, this statement out very quietly. They asked every hospital and health uh, department in every state to report every death with coronavirus if they have it, regardless if they died of a stroke, they died of a heart attack, if they died of anything, make sure, sure. you code it, you code it as COVID. So the deaths are overstated. Yes, there's mm -hmm. 180,000, but only 9,240 of them were directly from coronavirus. Oh, so, yeah. 
I don't know when he, I don't know when he's going to get that word out, but I don't think it's going to stop people from voting to tell you the truth. Well, I, yeah, it's ridiculous because you can line up uh, if, if you can line up anywhere, and like everybody's doing now for any any place, they line up so you can line up to vote. Uh, listen up, uh, exactly. uh, you know. Uh, I noticed that in my time in Europe, especially in France, the press over there had a definite left-wing bent. There seems to be this terrible fear of right-wing extremism today, presumably because of Nazism, okay? But is this part of the narrative, this fear of this uh, right-wing extremism? Let's talk about the bias of the U.S. press. How about the bias of omission? Exactly. Omission is the worst part because they... It's more important what they don't show you than what they do show you. That shows you their bias. But mm. Nazism was not right wing. It was left wing. It was called mm. Nazism means National Socialist. That's right. Socialist first. And the next step along that path is communism. And they wanted to get rid of all the communists. But the narrative is uh, in our media, they do not cover, uh, shows their bias. It, it expresses their bias. And I, I, I get different, I'm sure you do, you get different media. You don't use the mainstream media. I get Glenn Beck's plays media. And there's stories every single day that are just frightening about the damn, what's going on in this country. Mm. And people, most people, it's really frightening in a way. I, I fear for my grandkids if we don't stop this and Trump doesn't roll out the tanks and take care of these idiots because they're killing people, they're shooting cops, and it's not reported. Yeah, I know this. <laughs> I like something one day... Uh, they asked the new secretary, I mean, the new press secretary, Trump, sec- in the, when he had a rally up in Michigan, they said, well, how come all those people in that in that auditorium were not ma- wearing masks? And yeah. Haley McEnany says, well, well, it was a peaceful rally. Yeah. <laughs> very, that's very clever. Very clever. Very <laughs> clever. He was very clever, yeah. Well, listen, uh, the press keeps talking about Trump and the military, and you're a military guy, right? The facts are yeah. Trump got a deferment for bone spurs out of the Vietnam War. George H.W. Mm-hmm. Bush served his country. His son, W. Bush, got a college deferment. Obama didn't serve. And Clinton pulled a high draft number, 1969 lottery. So did I, by the way, but that's neither here nor there. Now, why does the press keep accusing Trump of cowardice and look at what Trump's doing for the military today. Your thoughts? He's done a lot for the military. The first thing I think was so important, at least in my opinion, was that he um, gave them a raise that they haven't had for years. Mm. When I was in the military, we, I mean, even when I was in Vietnam many, many decades ago, I was making like, I got overseas pay because I was in the battle zone, and I, was, I got like maybe $250, $300 a month. I thought that was great. <laughs> In those days, a dollar, a dollar how, was a dollar. How many but dollars? The, you... Uh, <laughs> but you know what? My niece is in the Navy, and she went in the Navy like three, four years ago, and my brother showed me what her job was. And she's working on this ship in Newport News Navy Yard, mm-hmm. and it's actually this one ship that's just totally gutted out. And during the Obama administration, they never gave any equipment or repairs or supplies to the military to fix up all these battleships, would have, which have to be constantly fixed up and repaired and uh, readjusted, etc. Warplanes, they didn't let the, they didn't build any more planes, they didn't build, he, nothing. He didn't give anything to the military, and he basically, I remember his famous uh, speech at West Point where he said, the greatest threat, you people are going to be new soldiers and warriors, the greatest threat is global warming. <laughs> I mean... I mean, I, they, they, if there was total silence, no, it was a, it was a joke. Yeah. So yeah. the only good thing about Obama was he wanted to get out of Afghanistan, and we should have. But um, but Trump, as far as I'm concerned, had the biggest the biggest budget for the military in the history of the country, as far as I'm concerned. And hopefully, 